Hello friends, welcome back to another episode of Decorate With Me. I'm Alessandra, and today we are going to kick off the next season, if you will, of Decorate With Me, featuring Bridgerton Season 2. Now, it just dropped on Netflix less than a week ago, so I'm not going to give any spoilers other than pretty much images you would have seen if you saw the trailers, previews, etc. for this series, uh, second season that Netflix shared. I'm really excited, just off the bat, that it's at a conservatory. Uh, for me, that's such a refreshing change from the ballroom. Um, we, we saw a lot of ballrooms uh, in the more traditional, formal sense in season one. And with this being the Danbury Ball, who... Um, you know, kicks off both seasons for us with a fantastic ball. I loved seeing it uh, taken out of the traditional space and into a conservatory, which is very luscious and beautiful. Now, we saw this uh, clip in some of the trailers, so no spoilers here, but I just, it's so beautiful with the illumination uh, inside the glass building. Uh, of course, uh, the, the, <laughs> you cannot, once you start seeing them, you cannot unsee them. All the urns and columns, which are very prominent in this series, they're all over. They're flanking the doors, the walkways. Very classic Bridgerton. I'm sure it's appropriate for the Regency era, but classic. And then we see our new characters, Kate and Edwina and Lady Sharma in the back here. Uh, of course, escorted by Lady Danbury, approaching the ball. Again, nothing we didn't see in a trailer or anything, but I just think uh, you can see the beautiful oversized urns on the columns in the back, and that's kind of just setting the tone for what we're getting into. And this is what we see in the trailers as well as the first uh, episode, and this is essentially the entrance to the dance floor slash the ball space in the conservatory. And, I mean, there's a lot going on here, but in all the best ways, we see this grand, oversized, I, I mean, it's kind of a chandelier, it's kind of a vine, it's kind, I mean, layers and layers of greeneries, florals, and um, just beautiful, cascading, lush foliage. And that's suspended from the ceiling, so again, that's probably a rig point like we saw a little bit of last season, but what's really fun is, this is kind of the center of the dance floor. We see uh, the the attendees dancing around it, so that makes me think, okay, this is their big focal wow piece, and it, I mean, it absolutely is. And then all of the columns, whether you see them up close or behind, have pink, white, and yellow florals mixed in, and, it, and they do look like they're kind of in bunches, right? Like somebody took a bunch, uh, like a, a spray, essentially, and kind of smooshed it out, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm into it, I'm not mad about it, I just, it's interesting, and then over here we see them kind of mixed and match, so keep an eye on that when you're watching, because it's really interesting to see how they, are, each column is a little bit different. We also have this shot here, which is a little bit more of eye level, but, so you can see columns, the big center focal piece here, um, there's a draped wall back here, which I'm assuming had like a bar, or maybe a buffet, lemonade stand, something in front of it, a little bit of crystal, kind of the classic. So we're really seeing a lot of the same elements as what we saw last uh, year, in, or season one of Lady Danbury's Ball with the white, green, and gold. Albeit this is in a different take, a little bit more organic take, which I love, but I'm, I'm into. But if you want something a little bit more refined and classic, I'll link down below so you can check out what we did last time uh, Lady Danbury hosted a ball with the same color palette, just very different styling. So I'm super excited about this. And so I'm taking this just like I did last time as kind of the wedding because I think this could be a gorgeous wedding. I mean, of course, this could be anything from a soiree to a anniversary party, a shower, or whatever, but I think there's just something so magical about this in the evening with the lush greens and just kind of that gold overtone, that warm overtone that you're seeing with the, I'm assuming this stimulated candlelight in here. Uh, there's just, it's just magical. So, what does everybody need? Some sort of altar focal point where the ceremony is taking place. And I love a big structure, whether it's part of your religion or not. It's just a beautiful grounding frame, however way you want to use it, whether it's part of the ceremony or just pure decoration. And Shop Wild Things has this really cool frame that you can get. And it's a it's pipe and base kit, but it's round. 
and I think that is just so fun. All of the products that you're going to see <laughs> are going to be linked down below, and I get things from all over the internet, so um, wherever I found something that made the most sense, I've, I just, I include it. That's all there is to it. If it makes sense, I need to have it, so it's going in the design. Uh, so I'll link to this product down below, and this is something that you could absolutely um, get and DIY this look yourself uh, with the right um, time <laughs> and a little bit of patience you can you can create a lot with this and this is really fun because it could be a whole a full circle if you wanted or if you didn't want the full circle you could just take a uh, part of the kit apart and just do like a half circle a semicircle so we're starting this off with the drapery because for me that's kind of an easy way to fill in a lot of space really quickly and really effectively from a budget point of view and what I really love are these curtains that I found online and they are a sheer curtain and they have kind of like this willow tool kind of sewn into them. So not completely see-through, but sort of see-through. And I thought how cool would that be to use that along the back portion of the circle here. And that way when you layer on top of it, it's already got a nice solid foundation of that kind of tender look that we see so prominently in our inspiration here. There's just drapes and drapes of cascading vines. So in the front or forward facing part of the circle, I wanted to have it a little bit more formally framing the couple for the ceremony as it were, or, you know, it could also double as a ceremony and a photo spot afterwards, depending on what kind of space layout you're using. And so I found these beautiful sage green polyester drapes uh, for, you know, for backdrops. So they're nothing fancy up close, but they do drape nicely. They're easy to deal with. And so I just kind of cropped them in there. But don't we? we're going <laughs> to we're going to make it look better. And I think the key to this look is just lots and lots of cascading drapery in the sense of like, but with greenery, you know, like lush, lush greenery, just flowing everywhere, just all sorts of types of greenery. I don't think there was any one particular greenery that stood out. Although we have kind of the more traditional ivies over here. And then these are kind of more of the greens. And I own some of these kind of grassy greens and I love them. They're very versatile. I use them actually in my feathering to inspire a tablescape. Um, I made a cool table art last year, year before. Um, they're very helpful, but I think this kind of willow vine garland is probably the most neutral, but also probably the most widely used as far as leaf shape that we see there. It's kind of just like, it's just kind of a leaf. It's not a distinct ivy. It's not a distinct grass. So I think if you can find something like this or use these types of vines or these vines, I guess themselves, um, you could, you can probably cover a lot of ground. You'll need a lot of them, but you know, that's kind of, <laughs> I mean, there's nothing short of excess here, right? So taking these greens, I went ahead and layered them as best I could, keeping in mind the inspiration here. And I, I, I'm a big believer of like, you can totally make a big statement piece for your wedding altar spot if you want for your ceremony. But the last thing I would want to see is you make something that's so crazy cool that people aren't looking at the couple, you know, like I don't want to take away from that special moment. Um, so we're going to see, keep a lot of these soft greens and we're not going to incorporate any floral in the yellow pink range like we see in here, but layering them, the greens in the back is going to make it look very similar to this type of look here. And then I went ahead, put a juniper garland on the top. And I think that just helps add some nice texture, some more of those willow type leaves in the front just to keep everything nice and soft. And I think that just really helps make everything look a little extra fun. And then just the tiniest amount of extra foliage slash um, floral here. I put a white, like a premium, like really nice white rose garland up here. Just because that is going to be in a lot of the pictures. So you want to make sure it looks nice. And then mixed in the back and a little bit on the edges is this nice white cherry blossom garland. And they're very lightweight, so you could layer all of this stuff with the silks, the greens, the vines, garlands, and the, fl the florals here, and it's not going to weigh near as much as the fresh stuff is, and that I just, I love. 
and just kind of finishing it up a little bit here, I was like, okay, let's see what this would look like, just kind of like with a couple in it. And I was like, okay, it needs a little bit more. It's a little something. And so I thought, I love the idea of this being in the evening time. So having these super grand gold, um, I mean, they were essentially candelabras, but these are about 40 or 50 inches tall. So quite large. They have these glass hurricanes on them. So you can put nice slim uh, pillar candles in them. Obviously, I highly recommend LED, whether you're inside or outside. Uh, but I thought, well, this is just that like extra layer of like, mm, we fancy, we're at a ball. So keeping in mind that like, I kind of like this being in an eeny bean type wedding. This is, I'm just thinking like nice, nice, um, it's kind of an olive green. It's not quite foresty green, but this nice rich green draping. I mean, if, if you're doing this yourself, you're probably not wrapping the whole room in green drapery, right? <laughs> but if you were renting it or you just want to have a focal area, a nice backdrop if the maybe the hall that you're renting or the ballroom that you're renting isn't um, the right color palette or something, you know, maybe putting in 20 feet of drape in might might be in budget and might look extra fancy and, and help frame the space out a little better. So this is kind of the, uh, the makeshift ballroom that we're going with here. And I mean, this is, this is a beautiful space, right? I mean, absolutely gorgeous with all the columns and the windows and everything. And it's just over the top, everything. And the, I mean, the greenery is everywhere. And so I took a similar concept to heart when I was trying to decide how are we going to recreate this big focal piece. Of course, you could absolutely pay a professional company to rig something like this uh, if your facilities allow rigging. And believe me, if your budget can allow for it, do it. Like, we'll let the professionals deal with it. But if you were trying to, you know, you wanted to spend some money, but you didn't want to spend that much money, or maybe you don't have a rig point at you know, the venue that you're at, um, there is a, I don't know if you, can you tell, there is a tower here whee, that is an aluminum frame. And I just went ahead boop, and cascaded beautiful green garlands and vines all over it. And again, you're, you're, we're seeing a lot of that like willow kind of neutral vine because I think that's probably the most prominent, but whatever types of vine you think are going to be great. And that's going to create the really easy foundation that we need to start this because really what do we see here it's a mass of green you know green everything and so you don't need the frame to be super fancy because it's it, if you do your job right you're barely going to see it now this is a 10 foot frame that i found they also have them in i want to say about eight foot frame if i recall correctly so plenty high enough to create a focal impact probably not quite this big, but it's still going to be very pretty. So again, same foliage used. We're going to fill that in with the IVs, the grassy greens and what have you. And then this is an opportunity to layer in some of that color just to bring in some brightness in the pink cherry blossoms, the yellow cherry blossoms. They're kind of cherry blossom, kind of hydrangea blooms, but either way, pink, yellow, and white blooms, like the smaller blooms layered in with some white and pink roses in here and it doesn't need to be a lot because obviously as we can see here there's just little pops of them here and there and I think that's all you need it doesn't have to be the great thing about this in my opinion is you could just have vines like garlands and vines and just drape them on here and it, and it would be probably pretty darn close to what they did here um, I think they probably hand wired some florals in individually some silk roses or whatever but still very easily achieved with vines so that's done. So we kind of have our dance floor done, right? I mean, you're, you're, if you're going to go through all of this and create this giant tower, there's a good chance you're already putting in a dance floor. So maybe you get a fancy vinyl wrap on it that, you know, accentuates the area that you're in. Maybe it's just a classic white. Um, but I, I just think how cool would it be to have like a little band off to the side and have everybody dancing around this? Just really fun. And, uh, this is a go big, go home type wedding, in my opinion. So keeping this again as the inspiration, these are gold towers. I don't know if you can see it. We about eight feet tall. I think they come in a few different sizes. Now these are meant to be seen. So these are gold. So you don't have to cover them completely. You can, if you want, you could just hang the stuff over the top, but they, I think this is better for something up close. I guess they're going to see Maybe it's on their table, maybe it's in the entrance, something like that. And I started hanging the greenery 
vines like we did before, and I found these really cute uh, little, it's kind of like a flower, tea light holders that hang, and I was like, oh my gosh, these are so cool if you put little LED tea lights in here and you just hung these around the bottom. I was like, man, ah, I like where this is going because it's gold, it's green, but I don't want to put too many florals in this. I just really like the green and gold combination, especially from um, the point of thinking about it as a up close thing that guests around a table might see, for se example. So kind of keeping that in mind, I created this tablescape here. We have a nice crinkled taffeta linen in gold, gold shivari, kind of a standard if you're outside, you might use like a white folding chair or something, but shivaris are kind of the, the standard, if you will. Um, and then I, I, I love a good charger, but I love fancy placemats. Like I think they're just, we're not using them enough. <laughs> and so um, I went ahead and found this green beaded placemat. I thought that could be really fun, if nothing else for the head table. Uh, and then we're bringing in a little bit of floral with the pops of pink as the napkin ring holder. And then just a little bit of soft foliage just to break up that kind of heavy gold with, again, a simple classic willow vine. And then the premium white rose, cream white rose uh, garland. We're just going to intertwine those down the middle. And then a very simple goblet set up with the candles. Obviously, I recommend LED all day, every day, just to add some height and texture to the table because here's what we're going to do. Okay, now obviously this is probably not what your ballroom looks like. I couldn't even confirm where this was, but it's some fancy place in Europe, I'm sure. But look at what we're doing with it. Can you tell? Okay, how about now? This is a ballroom that I'm familiar with here in Orlando at the Four Seasons, and I love this ballroom, and I think it would just be perfect for this type of event. But essentially what we did is we took this giant 10-foot structure, and we're using it as kind of the anchor for a bunch of different tables. Because then you don't have to spend a lot of money on each place, on each table, let's say, like each table centerpiece. You're going to spend a little bit of money, but you're not going to spend, you don't have to go big because you went huge with this. And then because you have the tables kind of creating kind of a giant X portion, if you will, um, that is just really, really fun. And that wow piece when you come into a room because this structure is so tall, it takes up just a ton of visual space and I, I'm a big fan of it. Now using this on our, our little setting that we came up with ourselves here, the only thing I will say is when you're making these types of structures or like let's say this X formation, always keep in mind line of sight if you're going to be doing a lot of speeches or there's some sort of like award like maybe this was for a luncheon or something, maybe this big tower isn't the best thing. So we're continuing on with a little bit more of a simpler tablescape, which seems crazy looking at this, but it is technically simpler. And so we're going to keep that texture going with the white crinkle taffeta tablecloth, a gold satin napkin just to help soften the look and there's not as much busyness. Again, the, the garland is going to be that kind of green willow, and then we're going to pair it with a pink rose this time. And then the smaller version, which is these, of the brand candelabras, modern candelabras uh, that we've used in the altar. This is the smaller kind of centerpiece version, so about 22 to 30 inches, I believe. They have them in a few different uh, sizes, so it depends what, what you're looking for line of sight wise. But these are really pretty, and again, if this was the, if, if I had my way and this was a nighttime wedding, these candles are going to look beautiful on the table, and in my opinion, you're not going to even want to waste any space on the table with any little votives with table with a centerpiece like this. Just doesn't need it. And then we used a s traditional uh, placemat at the other tablescape, and on this tablescape, I just wanted to show you guys that I found this beautiful green kind of and gold. It's green and gold, but it's got kind of a braided trim on it. And I thought this is really pretty and I like that as a charger. So that's an option if you don't like placemats, but I think placemats are kind of, um, they're not used enough and they're, they could be very, um, economical as well. So taking everything, putting it on the table, looking at what it would look like hypothetically in our, our, <laughs> our makeshift ballroom with the green wrap. This is kind of what we're looking at. Very pretty, very simple. And more importantly, very DIY friendly. Like you could put this together on this table in 
just a few minutes. So whether you needed to do this for a bunch of people at a wedding or you just needed a few tables, you could do this or you and some friends could do this very quickly. Now, any good party needs some sort of selfie station, photo wall, something these days. And so I am obsessed with the greenery walls and I think kind of the internet is too, but I found this kind of, it's called a dream meadow finish. And so there's a lot of different textures in here. So it's not the traditional boxwood that I normally use. And you saw a lot last season in Decorate With Me as we covered the first season of De um, Bridgerton's balls. This one has a little bit more interest. It has some ferns, a little bit of boxwood, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, and that creates that interest. And so I found a picture of a wall that was made out of this same square. And these are 40 by 40 inch squares, so they're pretty big. So you don't need a lot of them. But then I took that same green drape, the sage green that we used in the altar, and just kind of just flanked one of the sides. And I think it can make a really easy photo wall that doesn't require a lot of fuss and can be set up ahead of time. And um, in my mind, I'm like, okay, if you're having this, it's a grand wedding in the evening time, let's say maybe spring, maybe early summer, and you're going to probably rent a venue for this, I'm guessing. So renting a little bit of extra stuff is not probably going to break the bank. Uh, hopefully it's in the budget. If not, um, you know, there's ways around it, but I'm thinking, okay, this could be an opportunity to bring in some rentals to just really make the event shine. And so what we see here are, uh, a, this is a whole bar set up, even with the side tables from AFR. And they're, I don't know if they're completely nationwide, but they have rental locations all over the U.S. And I've used them for years and enjoy them a lot. Uh, they also are the people who own this table, these little side tables that are kind of like leafy looking. And then uh, the what you see here, the sofa and the two chairs, also rentals. And I'll, I'll link to the specific products that you could rent down below should you feel like you want to rent uh, products if your venue maybe doesn't have a lounge that you can use. And then I just kind of supplemented with stuff that I wanted in here <laughs> to make it a little bit more bespoke. And so that's why we see the green ottomans, the little tufted ottomans. I do love an ottoman whenever possible over a table because it doubles as potentially a place to put your plate or a place to put a butt. And you could never have enough lounge seating ever, in my opinion. So pairing that with some nice kind of lush green pillows, having our little candle accents that we have hanging from one of our centerpieces. And then this is an opportunity knowing that we're inspired by Bridgerton in obviously the Regency era, but we're taking this to a little bit more modern day feel but we're also knowing that there's kind of like tropical plants instant and conservative conservatory um so this was a good opportunity to do like a gold foil pillow that has these pretty plant prints on it and i just thought that's a nice little way to modernize the um the look a little bit so uh that's just you know custom pillows you you're probably like oh pillows why why even think about that but that honestly can sometimes really pull the look together and I wanted to keep lighter furniture in here because at the end of the day, this is very, I mean, it's a dark evening event, but it's still kind of bright. You know, there's this beautiful warm glow. And so the last thing I wanted was to have something dark kind of overshadowing it. And just from a cocktail, let's say bar area where you might have like a little lounge grouping or something, having some cocktail tables with some nice linens like these, uh, a nice fern linen, or maybe like a mossy velvet might be a nice cocktail table finish again these are rented just because this whole this kind of most of this page is a rented type look but i figured you know the event needs it the look needs it <laughs> so whew, that's a lot of stuff there's a lot of design going on here so let's kind of recap we have the wedding canopy lots of lush greenery beautiful modern shapes with the candelabras and the round form we're reinventing that focal spot in the dance floor with a big tower with cascading greenery garlands and vines. We have focal grand tablescapes in essentially green, white, and gold, keeping traditional uh, Danbury ball colors, but with a little bit more of a modern take. Then we have more of a simpler round tablescape, which can scale up or down as much as you want, but very easy to do. 
And then we have what I'm going to call our cocktail lounge, where we have the bar, the lounge, the cocktail tables, and our photo wall space. So a lot of fun uh, looks going on here. Very elegant, but not too fancy that you feel like you can't have a good time in. And that's what this is all about, really, is having a good time and mixing and mingling, even if it is a wedding. And so if you need more ideas for your next Bridgerton themed party, soiree, wedding, luncheon, shower, I don't know, Tuesday night dinner party at your house, I have a whole board Bridgerton ball related on Pinterest. Link is in the description. I'm always adding to it. So please <laughs> go there for anything you need before you search Google. I, I would guess that this search is going to be much more helpful for you. And as always, I really appreciate you guys watching. I am so excited to start working on more of the Decorate With Me series moving forward because now that season two of Bridgerton's out, there's so much more fun stuff to see. If you missed any of my episodes from season one balls and parties and soirees that we, we saw on the first season, uh, it's all on YouTube. It's all on my channel. Make sure you're subscribed, binge the playlist. It's all ready to go. The links are down below. And I even did a recap video of all eight looks that I did just released a couple weeks ago. So check that out. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna go uh, start working on the next one because it's so exciting. Uh, if you guys have any special requests as I move forward, whether you wanna see more weddings, more parties, more showers, more casual functions, let me know. And uh, I will be happy to try to work that into the next upcoming design. As always, thank you for watching. My name is Alessandra. Bye friends.